Listening Library presents Autumn Falls by Bella Thorne with Elise Allen. Read by Bella Thorne. Prologue. The day it happened, Jenna warned me it would end in disaster. Seriously, Autumn, she said, sitting down at my kitchen island and helping herself to an apple. I think this is going to be a tragedy. Gee, thanks for the vote of confidence, I said, reaching for the glass mixing bowls on the top cabinet shelf. I appreciate it. But it wasn't like she was crazy for saying it, because first of all, I didn't know how to cook. Second of all, I was attempting one of my grandmother Edie's trickiest Cuban recipes, Bonia Tio. And finally, I needed the outcome to be absolutely perfect so my father would understand that I was sorry. I hadn't seen him in a month. He had his own business and he traveled a lot. The company had something to do with computers, and I was vague about it not because he hadn't explained it to me, but because the explanation involved him speaking in technobabble, which was a language I didn't understand. Big picture, he made secure storage systems for companies with huge amounts of massively important data that couldn't be lost or stolen without the world pretty much coming to an end. Usually when he was away, we'd have great nightly conversations. But during this trip, I'd spent our phone combos accusing him of ruining my life and not caring about anybody but himself. And he wasn't away for work. He was in Florida, where his mom had had a stroke. He'd flown there the minute we heard the news and stayed with her in the hospital for a full week on death watch. Edie made it, but she couldn't live by herself anymore, so... Dad put her in assisted living. That should have been the end of it. Instead, he and Mom had a family meeting and decided we'd move from our suburb outside Baltimore to Aventura to be closer to Edie and keep an eye on her. Let the record show that this meeting included neither Eric nor me, even though together we made up half the family. I didn't want to move. I'd lived in Stillwater all my life. Everyone I'd ever known and every memory I'd ever made was here. Stillwater was where I'd gone to elementary and middle school, where I spent weekends hanging out with my friends at their houses and ordering pizza and Snapchatting silly photos of each other. It was where my best friend Jenna was, the one person who had seen me make a fool of myself during volleyball and sixth grade gym class and risked her own popularity to sit with me at the lunch table. Anne shared her bag of homemade chocolate chip cookies. If Edie needed help, why couldn't she move near us? Of course, Dad had a list of reasons. Edie couldn't handle the cold winters, she needed familiarity, the cost of living was cheaper in Aventura. My parents had always talked about moving south one day, blah, blah, blah. It all meant the same thing ripping me away from everything I loved in the middle of sophomore year without giving me any say. So every time Dad called and tried to get me excited about the beaches and the food and our beautiful new house with a pool, I'd scream, beg him to change his mind, or go silent so he would really know how heartbroken and betrayed I felt. If you loved me, I told him for the zillionth time the day before, you wouldn't do this to me. I do love you, Autumn, he'd said, which is why I made a decision. We're not moving, I asked hopefully. We're still moving, but I'm stepping down as CEO. I'll consult, but I hired somebody to oversee the day-to-day -day stuff, including most of the traveling. You mean you'll stay home with us? The words had sounded unreal coming from my mouth. My whole life, I'd been dying for Dad to do just that. To be there to high-five me when I got an A on a quiz, or drive me and Jenna to Target to laugh at one of my jokes or make me and Eric his famous banana nut pancakes, to participate in my life instead of just being a bystander. But you always said no one else could handle things as well as you. Maybe I'm not as indispensable as I like to think, he said wryly. I love you guys. I want this move to be a new beginning for us. And suddenly I'd regretted all the grief I'd been giving him. I wasn't happy, but I could at least stop torturing him like a brat. I wanted to welcome him home with a grand gesture to show him how sorry I was. 
hence the bony deal. Okay, I said, checking out my stage tableau in the kitchen.